This is the video you've been waiting for. We are going to test the takeoff performance of the Bush Baby after upgrading to the 95 horsepower 912 extra engine. Let's do it! to the Charlie taxi from Hangers to Baltic Point Runway 27. Okay, so the wind is picking up a little bit. It's good for short takeoffs. Uh, the wind should be about three or four knots, more or less on the runway right now. Okay, so from the first takeoff, um, it's probably not the shortest technique, but I'm going to take full flaps from the onset, apply power against the brakes, and then release brakes, lift the tail, take off. Power park traffic in here, Julia Charlie, lining up for take off, runway 7. And I'm going to stop exactly on this white line, so we can measure it later on Google Earth. Okay, I'm exactly on the line. So just before we get started, for the takeoffs, I'm going to use different short field techniques, which I'll explain as we go along. I'll play all the takeoffs, and then at the end of the video, I'll share the actual takeoff distances for each attempt. Park traffic in Charlie, rolling runway 27, staying in the circuit. Okay, so I'm going to I'm not sure how short that was, but it was pretty short. And I'm just going to do a normal landing for now. I'll do a short landing video some other time. Right, Fox traffic in here, Julia Charlie, turning final approach, runway 29 on the gravel, full stop landing. Now to back taxi all the way to the tarmac runway, and I'm doing the takeoffs on the tarmac runway because that's how I'm going to measure how long my takeoff rolls is with the help of the camera and uh, Google Earth. So for this takeoff, I'm going to start with zero flaps, and then I'm going to apply flaps as I roll out. The typical short takeoff technique that everybody is familiar with. And on the line again. Yes. Traffic in Angela Charlie, final approach, runway 29 on the gravel, full stop plan. Bit of a crosswind now. Not much though. Okay, 
is over this takeoff, I'm going to do something else. Um, I'm going to start with full flaps. It's like the first one, but I'm not going to lift the tail for the takeoff roll. I'm going to let it take off in a three point attitude. But I'm going to lift the tail wheel just an inch, an inch and a half um, from the runway so that I'm not installed attitude when I take off. Uh, it's just, it's going to be a little bit longer, but it's a, a safe way um, to execute it. Right, and we are on the line. Stick neutral. Traffic in Angela Charlie, final approach on way 29 on the gravel, full stop landing. Let's do one more in the configuration that I think is the shortest way to take off. Park traffic in here, Gillette Charlie, lining up for takeoff, runway 27. Big force. Accelerate, 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 and take off. So now for the takeoff distances, which was roughly measured by using the markings on the runway and determining at what point the wheels leaves the runway by watching the wing dip camera footage and then using Google Earth to measure the distance. However, these takeoff distances are pointless without the relevant environmental information. Firstly, the density altitude at the time of these tests was just over 5,700 feet. The wind strength was about 4 knots. The all-up weight of the plane with myself and 35 liters of fuel was about 410 kilograms. And lastly, our ground adjustable propeller isn't pitched for climb performance but for a faster cruise which penalizes takeoff performance. The takeoff distances were as follows in order. 111 meters 126 meters, 116 meters, and 118 meters. That was a little disappointing because I really wanted to get them in in less than 100 meters. It's interesting that the shortest takeoff was the one where I set full flaps before I started the takeoff roll, which adds drag. The takeoffs where I started to run with zero flaps and then added full flaps at the last moment which were the second and the fourth run, were actually the longest takeoff runs. I'm fairly certain it's just my technique, which is a bit sloppy though. All in all, I don't think it's bad for a 95 horsepower airplane, considering the altitude and the fact that the propeller isn't set for climb performance, but set for cruise performance. I was probably also a bit overcautious, not really pulling up enough, as you can see here, and I could have gotten it up a bit quicker. Hit that like button if you liked this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.